Do we have a new collector's item on our hands? Yeah, I still have some of these at home. Am I going to return them now? Who knows? Might be a collector's item, but I held in there for a long time. I am one of the original Netflix customers. Hey everyone, this is Kevin T. Rodriguez, film critic of iCritic.net. Welcome to my media channel. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the legacy of Netflix on DVD as well as some interesting developments of what's going on with the business. So, when Netflix... Some of you may or may not know, when Netflix started and in business, they rented DVDs in the mail. It took them a couple years to catch on, but once they did, they took off and they never looked back. They famously even contributed to the death of Blockbuster and Hollywood Video, which were video chain stores that you would go to to rent a video or a DVD. But once people started getting mailed the DVDs, it was so convenient and there was no late fees, why would you... Um, go back to the actual stores. It just didn't make any sense. And so Netflix really made their mark. Now, recently they have become more known for streaming and content. Once the DVDs caught on, they pivoted to streaming, and then they started making their own original content for TVs and movies. And Netflix has done very well for themselves. They also make mobile games. I don't know if you're aware of that, but Netflix makes mobile games. Um, look it up on the App Store, whatever one you have. Type in Netflix games. It'd be interesting to see how many games you can play for free if you're a Netflix subscriber. And I remember when we were offered a free trial. My first Netflix DVD was Cowboy Bebop Volume 1. It was a revolution to me because for a long time as an anime fan, it, it was tough being an anime fan back in the day. Um... Oh, someone just screeched. I don't know if you heard that, but we'll continue. Where basically your options were limited to Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon, Pokemon, and whatever was on Cartoon Network. And, you know, then of course you bought movies from Bondi and Pioneer, Tenchi Moyo's, Vision of Escaflowne, Gundam Wing, all that jazz. And when I saw Netflix's anime selection, I was ecstatic. Like, what? I can just rent anime now? Like, I don't have to buy each disc to test it out? I remember like watching the whole Cowboy Bebop series and it's like I don't even have to buy any of them. Now that might have made Bondi at the time unhappy, but I have since bought that series a few times on disc, so I, I feel okay renting it initially the first time. I was poor, what can you say? And once Netflix started coming in, we basically never went back to Blockbuster except to buy some previously viewed movies like 3 for $14 or something like that. That was the only thing Blockbuster was good for. But... Then, of course, streaming came along, and people decided streaming was more convenient than discs, and as a result, Netflix um, started to focus more on streaming and less on DVDs. In fact, not a lot of people know this, but if you go to Netflix.com, you don't even see your DVD queue. You had to go to DVD.com, which Netflix silently spun off. And so to actually sign up for the DVD rental service, you had to go to DVD.com. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. It's interesting that that went through undetected because when Netflix was originally going to spin off the DVD um, side, they were going to call it Quickster or something like that. And basically people didn't like it because you had to go to two different sites. Netflix backtracked that. And then they did it anyway when basically no one was going to notice. But... The time has come. After 25 years, they have said, that is it. We are shutting down the DVD rental program. September will be the last month. And uh, that will be that, as they say. Now, some people are wondering, well, why did this not happen years ago? Well, it didn't happen years ago because there were still like 8 million people using their renting DVDs. And that's a pretty healthy profit. Apparently, now there's like 1.2 million DVD renters on DVD.com, and for Netflix, that totally dwarfs the roughly 238 million people subscribing to just the streaming service. So Netflix feels pretty comfortable that if they get rid of it now, it's not going to look, it's not going to make much of a difference on the spreadsheets. It's just not. 
And, you know, that was a reality. We knew that was going to happen at some point. Um, 25 years was a good run, though. Um, and that's great. Uh, I mean, it's finally time to move on. But here's the thing. You're still going to have, like, a million people who like that service who are not going to have any more. And there's been articles pointing out that a lot of those million viewers came from rural areas where streaming really is not that big of a thing. In fact, when some people go like, well, why is broadcast TV still available? Why is cable still available? Why do they still make DVDs? It's because, you know what? You start getting out of the big cities and you start getting to rural areas. Guess what? Bandwidth is a big problem. They don't want to stream. They, they can't stream, really. So they still do physical media. And so Netflix was catering to that company or that population, I should say. And so those people are going to be left high and dry. Now, aside from romanticizing about the good old days of Netflix, watching a movie, mailing it in, watching them as fast as you can when you initially got them, but then watching them not as fast as you got used to the idea and then probably ended up paying more money to rent them than you would have to buy most of them. Some interesting news came out because even though 1.2 million subscribers does not sound like a lot to a big corporation like Netflix these days. If you do the math, at $9.99 a month, and some people are on the $20 a month plans, but let's just stick with $9.99 for one DVD, that is roughly $12 million a month. And there's a good sense a lot of that was profit. Now then, that creates an opportunity for someone to come in. And sure enough, the CEO of Chicken Soup for the Soul has actually stated he would be interested in acquiring the DVD.com assets. He's made a public offer office to Netflix saying, hey, I want the domain, I want the warehouses, I want the discs, I will pay you a fair price for them, and I would like to take this off your hands rather than see you just shutter it down. Now you would think that since Netflix is just gonna shut it down anyway, hey, why don't you sell the business, get it off your books, you can make some money off of it, and then you can move on to streaming. Interestingly, Ted Sarandos, the CEO of Netflix, or the co-CEO, whatever his position is at the moment, has basically said that, no, we're not gonna sell the DVD division. We're just gonna wind it down, we're going to liquidate it, we're gonna get rid of it. So that begs the question, well, why wouldn't they sell to Chicken Soup for the Soul? Why wouldn't they make some money off this business that they're clearly getting out of, but they don't want to, but they don't want to keep running it themselves, so, they, so they're not going to sell it to someone? Like, why would they just do nothing? And here's the thing. It, the DVD.com name is not profitable enough for Netflix to keep using. It's still profitable but not to the extent that their other avenues are profitable. But here's the thing, if you sell it to another company, well, that might help grow that company. Now, Chicken Soup for the Soul, I know that you all know them for their like little books and things like that. They're actually becoming an entertainment company. They actually even bought Redbox a couple of years ago. I don't know if anyone knows this, but they bought Redbox. So they own all those Redbox kiosks. They own the Redbox streaming services. This is all from Chicken Soup from for the Soul um, Incorporated or whatever they're called. Chicken Soup for the Soul is in the DVD business. And I can understand why they would want this. If they bought the DVD.com name and the assets, they would gain all those subscribers. So they would start making $12 million dollars a month, not only would they have new revenue and new customers, but since they have the red boxes, guess what? People could take their Netflix movies or their DVD.com movies, bring them to Redbox, and drop them off at the store. And they could either get another one right there on the spot or have another one mailed to them. I could see Chicken Soup for the Soul making a pretty big business play. They could they could make this successful. And since there's a lot of people who still rent from Redbox because it's there, it's convenient, they could get more people to sign up for DVD.com because like, oh, look, I go there anyways. I'll, if Redbox doesn't have it, I'll have it mailed to me. I'll watch it. And then next time I'm at the store, I'll just drop it off at the Redbox. And then I'll either get a movie there or another movie will come in. It makes a lot of sense for why Chicken Soup for the Soul would want DVD.com. 
But Netflix doesn't seem interested in selling because, well, that would actually make them look bad. Because if they sold that to another company and that company actually grew their business with those assets, Netflix, in all fairness, probably wouldn't lose any money. I don't think the stock would go down or anything like that. But it would look like a foolish decision. In fact, it would actually make stockholders question, you know, why didn't you buy Redbox? Why didn't you, if there was still money to be made in the DVD service, why didn't you expand it a little, little bit? I think it's hard to dispute that the DVD business is more profitable than the streaming business, that's for sure. It just doesn't have as many people right now, so that's why Netflix is cutting it loose. But they don't want to sell it to a competitor who might use it to grow their company and make Netflix look bad. So, do I think that Netflix will sell? You know, it's hard to say. It really depends what they get offered. I have a very hard time believing that the board at Netflix, if um, Chicken Soup for the Soul went up to Netflix and said, hey, we'll give you $100, $200 million. We want to buy your DVD website, the service, the assets, the warehouse. We want to own that. We want to buy it. Here's $200 million. How does the board at Netflix justify saying no to free money at that point? I don't know. Just depends how much of a pride issue this ends up being. I'm sure there's going to be other things that would complicate the matters. Like you might have noticed that Netflix's envelopes were red. They're famously red. Redbox is also red. So Redbox will be taking over that icon from Netflix that might be a bitter pill for them to swallow. So here's the thing. I am sad to see Netflix top DVDs go. Um, I still use it primarily for documentaries and foreign language films that Netflix and other sites still don't have, although that's becoming less of an issue thanks to the Criterion Channel, HBO Max, Crun even Crunchyroll. So, you know, admittingly, it's getting harder and harder to find movies on disc that aren't on a streaming service, but it's still useful for that reason. And there are still people I know that live in some of the middle states of America and their internet is just not strong enough to really justify getting rid of their cable TV or DVDs by mail. And so there is a market there. And, you know, as someone who owns Netflix stock, if I was on the board of Netflix, I'd say, hey, if Chicken Soup for the Soul wants to buy this business, let's let them make an offer, see what we can get rid of it for. But when you're Netflix and you want to stay on top of things, the last thing you want to do is sell an asset to a competitor that could use it to grow, even if they're never going to grow beyond what Netflix is. Let, let's make this clear. Even if Chicken Soup for the Soul can turn this from like a $12 million a month business into like a $30 million a month business. And that's that's a stretch. That is not gonna come anywhere near to what Netflix makes and what they're do doing. Um, that's still pennies compared to what Netflix makes from their streaming. But again, $12 million a month, that's gonna look good to someone. So the question is whether they buy the assets from Netflix or whether they create a similar business and just start over. I guess we're going to have to see, but Netflix closing the service is not the death knell to DVDs that some outlets are making it out to be. In fact, I suspect that if Chicken Soup for the Soul can't buy this business, either they or someone else will create a new DVD by mail service because, hey, 12 to $30 million, there's a lot of companies that would kill for that. So anyway, I would like to know though, what are your thoughts on all this? Comment below, like, favorite, share, subscribe, and as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one.